I think the first place to start with you, Matt, is what are some of the takeaways from your NFL head coaching experience? That's a great question. You know, I, I think I think you know I think number one that I, I enjoyed it. You know, I mean, it obviously didn't end the way that I I wanted it to. Um, I went there with high you know high high expectations and hopes. Um, you know, when you walk into that building and you come up into the second floor, there's like. A, there's two trophies, you know, the 2015 and the 2004 championship game trophies. And then there's an open, empty championship trophy. And that, that that's, that's that's for the Lombardi trophy. And I always took that very seriously. You know, hey, you know, this this, this region, this town, they, they deserve they deserve to win it all. And uh, when I worked at the Giants and you walked in every day, you walked by all the Super Bowl trophies. And so that 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 thought about doing something historical was always weighed you know very heavy on me. Um so, you know, you're disappointed when it when it, it doesn't happen. But I think, you know, as you get away from it, you have to do a couple of things. Number one, you have to go back and think about all the people who, who have, you know, when I took that job, I had never heard of the word COVID. Um, you know, I have three kids, you know, to think that how much has happened in the last two and a half, three years, you know, just the world has changed. Um, you think about all the people that you've met, all the people that have impacted you, all the people that, you know, hopefully, you know, I got into coaching to to help people and, and, and help players be successful. So all the players that I had a chance to coach. And so um, I think that's the first place you start. I think, you know, after that, you, you, you the advice I've been given is you know, the coaches that I look up to, the coaches that I respect, Tom Coughlin, who I work for, Bill Belichick, Andy Reid, who I've always been close to because of our time in Philly. It was, it was kind of near each other. Um, Pete Carroll, all of those guys went through this at some point in their career. You know, they were they were. They were an NFL head coach and they were all fired. And, um, uh, you know, you read Pete Carroll's book, he talks about I really after being fired the second time, sitting down and writing out, hey, this is this is who I am. And I don't think you ever really know who you are until you go through adversity. And, and my my coaching career has been, you know, go to Temple, flip it, you know, a success coach of the year, go to Baylor, flip it, coach of the year. And to come to Carolina and not be able to have that ultimate success, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm proud of some of the things that we did. And I think in time that it would have worked. Um, but but to not have that success, I think it's a great time to be grateful for the people that you had to really, really look back, though, also and say, hey, what what, what can I have done better? What 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 will I do differently next time? Um, and, and allow hope that my story is the same as those guys, that my greatest success happens after this adversity. And um, so that's what, I've, that's what I've tried to do. Um, but I look back very grateful for the opportunity. I mean, not many people have a chance to coach at this level, coach in a, in a league like this. And so to, to have had that, um, I, mean, I was, I, I was, you know, I think, I think gratitude is probably the, 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 the disappointed, but also very grateful. I have no doubt that you, because of your nature, poured heart, soul, everything, and certainly the crazy hours into the job of being an NFL head coach with the Panthers. But having had that great success at Temple, at Baylor, in any way, you know, did that maybe not condition you well enough possibly for the idea that, hey, this is going to be really hard and is that, is, and, and nothing was easy about your college experience, but Hey, I'm 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 a really good college coach here. I should be able to do this. Did was your mindset that what 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 was it like in terms of that transition? You know, I don't I don't think I, I mean I, I hope I wasn't not ready for it or not thinking that way. I think you know I, you know when you win at a place like Temple, that's that's a hard place. You know, it's an, it's a non traditional winner. It's not like hey, I won at Alabama or you know it, it, you won at Temple. That's that's a place where you have to kind of figure things out. And then when you go to a place like uh, Baylor, you know you you have to really kind of figure things out, you know, uh, coming off of a scandal like they were on. And so, you know, you get to Carolina, um, you know, it's still a young franchise, you know, there's a, there's a great deal of turnover and then COVID hits. And, and I think really every coach in the NFL was just trying to figure it out. So I think all of those skills prepared me for that. Um, at the previous two places, we started off poorly, but we, we got better every year. And eventually, a, you know, a young nucleus uh, took over and they won championships. And so, when I look at the Panthers and I see, you know, J.C. Horn, when I see, you know, D.J. Moore, when I see Brian Burns go to the Pro Bowl last year, when I see Derek Brown, I see the first round draft pick this year, Icky, you know, um, when I see those guys, I, I think there's a young nucleus of talent. And that was kind of the plan. Hey, well, let's do what I've seen the great NFL franchises do. Let's do what we did in college. Let's let's build through the draft. Let's build young. Let's watch these guys grow up and hopefully, you know, be able to overtake the NFC South at some point. So. 
even though I was let go this year and, uh, you know, Steve, Steve's a great coach. And so Steve, Steve will do a great job there. Um, that team that I was a part of putting together, you know, they're, they're, they're still three and one in the NFC South. Um, you know, we kind of, our plan, Hey, let's, you know, that, that when I got there, there was Drew Brees was at the saints, uh, Matt Ryan was at the Atlanta Falcons. And then about a month in, Oh, by the way, uh, Tom Brady <laughs> showed up to Tampa Bay. So, you know, I think you look at it like, Hey, how do we win this division? And, and in a disappointing year so far, um, you know, for, for me, obviously, um, you know, that plan of, hey, let's, young, let's build this young team that can grow up and hopefully as those quarterbacks retire or move on, we can be the, you know, creme de la creme of the NFC South. And I, you know, I, I take heart just looking at a couple bits and examples of, hey, you know, that when I was there, we beat the Saints pretty convincingly. And then, you know, they went out and they beat, after I was gone, they went out and beat the Buccaneers convincingly and they beat the, the Falcons convincingly and really should have beat them the other time. They should be 4-0 and in the NFC South. And so, um, so, yeah, so I think, I think the plan's the same. I mean, I think the plan in football's always been the same. You know, you, you get a good group of guys, you know, they kind of, you develop them. They kind of learn a system, learn a culture. They, they go through hard times and then eventually you hope that they break through. You know, I, I just could, I, I just kept waiting for them to break through on my watch. And I thought that that Saints game was it. It wasn't, you know, I kept, I thought, Hey, if we get through these two NFC, you know, this past the 49ers, maybe it'll happen then. Um, but, but, you know, they asked me to leave and that's, that's part of this business. You know, it's hard to talk about improvement when you don't see the results. Um, but I, but I love that group of guys and I'm, you know, I, I root for them every week and I root for Steve every week. Um, so I, I think, I think, uh, I think, I think the plan was right. It just, uh, I just wasn't able to execute it, you know, in, in the time given. And speaking of the time given 2020, is of course the beginning i mean you're we're in that COVID mode uh you and everyone else uh not only in football but i mean in basically the world but it it, it certainly had to force you as a first time uh nfl coach to do things very differently and of course you would have been doing this differently if you were still at the collegiate level how did you feel the best way you know what, what that how did you feel the best ways were to adjust to that and and how did you handle it yeah you know I, for me um my success in coaching has always come down to you know uh relationships building a you know a kind of a, a culture of of hey we all we all play together you know we're all you know working for a common goal um and i think that only happens through 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 you know critical conversations, you know, through player development, you know, to be, to be honest with you, the, 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 uh, you know, the, the, the pandemic was really hard on me because I've been, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a relational coach. Like even this year, like every Tuesday I'd, I'd sit in my office downstairs, not in my normal office, a different office downstairs and just visit with guys and talk about the previous game and talk about, to me, that's the only way you can get young players to grow is to, you know, not, not, not in a huge setting where everyone's watching them, but one-on-one -on -one, sit down, watch, watch some tape talk to them, listen to them. You know, so often they players and, you know, guys have so much going on inside that you have to just shut up as a coach and listen. And, um, you know, I wasn't able to do that that first year. And that, that's not an excuse because no one was able to do it. But for me, who I am as a coach, like um, it all comes down to relationships and all, all comes down to conversation and communication and helping guys make that jump from good to great. And so uh, I struggled, you know, with a mask on, I struggled um, talking via zoom that, that, that 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 maybe was good for some people. It allowed them to be very you know X's O's and tactical and technical. For me, it, I, I had a hard time with that. And so, you know, really at the end of last year, um, that was the first time I really was able to go back and enjoy the part of the game that I love the most. You know, go to dinner with some guys, go play golf with McCaffrey, go play golf with Shaq Thompson, uh, sit down in my office and visit with guys. And so, um, but I, you know, I mean, part part of being a great coach is adapting to things that happen. And, um, you know, I, I certainly did my best during COVID as did everyone else. Um, probably changed the way a lot of people coach. If it did anything for me though, it, it, it brought back for me how much I love that relational part of it. And my relationships with the guys this year were so different, so much stronger than they had been in year one and year two. And so if I could go back, I would, I would try to find different ways, you know, to, 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 to connect. Um, because at the end of the day, great coaches connect with their players and help them help them play their best football. And as is true with, I think, pretty much every coach I've been around, we always talk about the lessons you learn and, and how to improve. And you challenge your team accordingly that takes something out of everything, even victory. Uh, but what are the things 
that, okay, maybe I would have done this differently. And I'm sure you've probably put together uh, some sort of list, either a physical list or a mental list of some of those areas. What, what would that be if you, if you had to do it all over again um, in terms of what you would change about how you approach things? Yeah, I, I think the number one thing is, um, and I, I probably did this better in, in college than I did at the Panthers. And I think a lot of that, you know, probably has to do for very different reasons. But, you know, Dick Vermeil gave me advice my first year uh, at Temple. He called me, I think we were like 0 and 5. <laughs> and he said, hey, Matt, um, don't listen to anybody else. Trust yourself. I mean, listen to your assistant coaches, but don't listen to outside noise. Don't listen to outside voices. Trust yourself. Do what is right and see it the whole way through. And um, for me, you know, as a coach, I've always, you know, I've kind of I've been an offensive line coach. I've been a quarterback coach. I've been a defensive line. You know, I've kind of, you know, been, you know, been a lot of different places. And I think one of my gifts has always been to be able to look at things and say, hey, that's right. Hey, that's that's wrong. Um, try to teach the game holistically to the whole team, not just, hey, my position, my assignment, but how you fit into everything. And if I could go back, the things that maybe I saw that were wrong um, or things that I just disagreed with um, probably along the way, I would I would I would probably have addressed them quicker. You know, you get into you get in the NFL, you know, you're dealing with you know, you're working with a GM, you're working with personnel, you're working with all these different departments. Um, and I had great I had great GMs during my time. You know, I was there for two and a half years. Scott Fitter, Marty Herney, two of the classiest guys you could ever work with. Um, but I'm saying as you're getting pulled in all these directions, um, you know, when you see something wrong with the way a position is playing or something wrong with the game plan, um, not just going in and, and, and questioning it, but going in and saying, no, no, we're going to do this differently. Because, uh, you know, I, during my time there, you know, we built the, the second best defense in the league in just two years. But, um, you know, if you see something wrong on offense, if you see something wrong on special teams, um, uh, you know, getting it fixed immediately. And, um, you know, maybe sometimes I just didn't get that done quick enough, um, uh, you know, making sure, hey, in terms of, hey, who are we playing and we have them in the right spots. I think I think you have to just go in there as a head coach and have elite confidence that, you know, I, I, I know what's right and not listen to the external voices, you know, in your head, not listening to, you know, too much banter, but just say, no, this is the way we're going to get it done. And, um, um, you know, being a head coach in the NFL or being a head coach even in college is really, really weird in that it's a really weird setup in that every year you go through all these experiences and, you have all of this knowledge poured into you, both what you've done right and what you've done wrong, right? Um, and every year that you're a head coach, you actually get better and better and better because you sit, you're able to sit down and say, you know what, I learned this. Oh, that was bad. I got to change that. Um, but the way that it works is most times after a couple of years, you know, they, they say, hey, you know what, we're going to move on. And so an organization, a team, a college, a pro team, they're basically paying for you to become a better coach. <laughs> they're paying you to go out there and have these experiences. You get all this knowledge. You get all this. You you learn how to manage the clock better. You learn how to work with players better. You learn how to evaluate better. You learn how to X's and O's better. Um, and, and you go through that whole process. Um, and I think that's why so many guys have success their second time. And so for me, as I look back, you know, hey, I, 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 I don't care if I'm coaching high school, college or pro. It comes down to relationships. It comes down to player development. It comes down to players trusting you. It comes down to you being able to tell a player the truth and them trusting that you're doing it for the right reasons. And that only happens. You can only have that level of player development when when there's a relationship there. And so building relationships, telling guys the truth and then. As I said, being being strong that if you're going to be if I'm as the head coach going to be held accountable for it, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to listen to Coach Vermeil. I'm going to I'm 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 not going to be told, hey, play this guy. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be told, hey, though this plays right. Trust me. Uh, at the end of the day, if if I'm going to be held accountable for it, um, then I'm going to do it. And I think that you know that you have to go through adversity, you have to go through criticism, you have to go through the fire to come out hardened on the other side and have that mindset where you can do it in real time. It's easy to say, but you can do it in real time when you're being pulled in all these uh, positions, you know, coach Polly would always say, Hey, just coach the team. And so you, you know what, just go coach the team. And that's, that's, um, that's just part of this. And this process I'm going through right now of, of evaluating, and I'm sorry for talking so long, Vic. No, uh, no. <laughs> but this process I'm going through of evaluating, Hey, what would I do differently? Uh, what would I do the same? There's a lot of things I say to myself, like, you know what, I walked out of that building that day. I said, you know what? What I believe in is right. The things that I believe in is right. And, you know, obviously, anytime you're rebuilding something, it's going to take some time. But you know what? The core fundamentals, the core philosophy, the core way that that I and when I say I, me and my staff, the, the core ways that we do things, it's right. And don't ever waver from it. Don't let someone 
don't let this shake your confidence. In fact, man, be emboldened. You know, uh, Theo Epstein talks about when he went to the Cubs, hey, this is going to be – he told everyone, hey, this is going to be a five-year thing and we're going to do lots of things you're not going to like. And he said, when you know, when things got adverse, you have to double down on it. And um, that's kind of what I said earlier – what I was saying earlier about, you know, if I know something's wrong, just stick with it. Like, and, But if I know something's right, man, double down on it. And it, it might not have worked this time, but um, I left there saying, hey, you know what? what I believe in our philosophy, our way of doing things, our process, it is right. And um, the next time I, the next time I coach, um, I'll go in, I'll go in, I'll go in with way more confidence than I stepped in, uh, in Carolina, um, way, than I stepped in in Temple, than I stepped in in Baylor, because I've had 10 years to get myself to this point where I know now in my mind, what really works, what really builds sustained success. Cause I've seen it work and I've seen it not work. And, and I have this vision in my mind of, hey, this is exactly how you do it. Yeah, you're echoing really the Steeler philosophy. I mean, the Rooney family, stay the course. Chuck Knoll, stay the course. Tony Dungy learned this. I mean, what you're you're echoing, I've heard in, in various forms the same theme. Believe, believe in yourself and believe in what you do. Uh, and it sounds like you have a healthy approach in that regard because there are obviously things – that you've done right many uh, to get you to the point that you were to coach in the NFL. So yeah, you, you, you do have to learn, but uh, from the things that maybe didn't go so well, but, but there's a core to what you do. And, and I think that's, that's a healthy approach. The other thing that people forget uh, when there are coaching changes, when, uh, when coaches are let go, it, and, and of course it's not always, it's not just the head coach. Generally it's the head coach and, staff members, families uh, get impacted. And it's, it, it always bothers me that it's, it's trivialized that, that, well, they got to, they got to make a change. Okay. But that's a life change uh, for the, the, the individuals, the human beings involved. And I wanted to ask you how you, how that's been handled within your family, just in terms of coming to grips with the idea that this didn't work out and it's very public and and again, you've got other people in your life uh, that uh, that are that are not connected with the football team, but are only through you. Yeah, you know, um, for my own family, I've, I have a he was 17 at the time. He's just he's recently turned 18 year old son. I've got um, uh, a nine year old daughter. I've got a seven year old daughter. And then obviously I have a, a beautiful wife, Julie, who's who we've been together for a long, long time. So we've Julie and I have seen the good and the bad. And, uh, you know, just in our lives. Right. And, you know, I look at it in multiple, multiple ways. Like, you know, I think the hardest part was I remember getting home and my, my nine year old daughter coming home and just the tears in her eyes of, you know, daddy got fired, you know, the fear of it. Like, what's this mean? Um, that, that's a, that's a moment that will be echoed in my brain forever. Um, you know, my, uh, that, that, that was hard, but at the same time, it also, you know, I, I've let coaches go. I've let assistant coaches go. I've cut players. And they all had to go home and they had to have that same conversation with their family. So if anything, you know, I, uh, I have an empathy uh, now that I wouldn't have had of going through, you know, the fire of going through something so public that I can share with players moving forward, that I can share with assistant coaches moving forward, that I can share with people moving forward. And so um, that was a hard day. It's, as you said, it's hard because it is so public. Um, you know, I was on the field for, for several games with my son as, you know, they're chanting in the stands to fire me. And, um, you know, I, 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 well, what a great life lesson I've had a chance to teach my kids, right? You know, what, mental health and kids are struggling. Um, and, and one of the main reasons why kids just all across the United States are struggling is because, you know, social media and nothing's really wrong with social media, but that they, they hear so much about who they are based upon what other people say. Mm -hmm. And uh, years ago, I was walking down the street in Philadelphia. We had, you know, I had just gone to Baylor. Maybe we were back in town and, you know, I'd had a ton of success. And uh, my son and I are walking and two guys across the street started screaming, coach rule. We love you, man. We need you back in Philly. And, you know, I said, oh, I appreciate it guys. And, you know, we kept walking. And I said, my son said, how did, what does that, how does that make you feel? And I told him, I said, that's not real, buddy. None of that's real. Like uh, what's real is, is how, how, how you feel about me. What's real is how the players feel about me. Um, you know, what's real is, is how your mom feels about me. What's real is how I feel about myself. And so, you know, for my kids to see me publicly, um, you know, people take joy in, 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 you know, you know, wanting me fired. 
uh, that is so good for them to recognize that, like, I still came home after those games and had a smile on my face and I wanted to be dad. And more importantly, I got up the next day and I went to work and I gave my all to, because I want them to recognize that, that no matter what people say about you, it's, it's about who you really are, whether they're saying great things. I mean, my kids got to get on the private jet and fly there and have the Carolina Panthers, you know, introduction. And they got to see all that cool stuff. And I would tell my son, you know, Hey buddy, if you want to, if you want to play ping pong with McCaffrey, if you want to, uh, if you want to hang out in the locker room with Jeremy Chin, then we also have to go through the hard times too. And so uh, I think, I think my kids seeing my wife and I, um, you know, my wife is, I mean, like she, she got to take the kids to school the next day. Like, it's not like, it's not like you get, we, we could just run away and, and go, you know, and we got away for a few days, but then that, that following Monday when I'm, I'm at the, my wife's, my wife's back in the grind in Charlotte and, you know, seeing people and, and the other thing of it, Vic, is, you know, you can think about, hey, these people chanted this or these people were happy on social media. But you meet so many people who who are so amazing. Uh, you know, so many people in Carolina and Charlotte have made sure that our kids are OK. I was walking down the street the other day and a couple uh, guys were landscaping and they stopped me and they like, coach, let's get a picture. I'm like, why do you want a picture with an unemployed guy, man? And they were like, nah. And, and you know what? You see you see it all. So, yeah, you know, I, I my family, you know, um, I try to find the good in it. I try to find, you know, um, Julie sat the kids down and um, she reminded them that I was the offensive coordinator at Temple. And I think it was 2010 and Al Golden, great coach, got the head coaching job at the University of Miami and um, didn't take me with him. And so, you know, I was kind of like, OK, what are we going to do? And Steve Adagio came in and he said, hey, man, I'll, I'll hire you to recruit for the next two months. And then it's sign and damn you know, I don't know what, I can't promise you anything. So I went out and I recruited for a school that I didn't know if I was going to be at. And, you know, I remember cleaning my office out. Like Julie and I were there at like 10 o'clock at night. We were cleaning my office out and, and then coach Adagio gave me a call and said, Hey man, I'm going to keep you. And, uh, uh, you know, a year later, Tom Coughlin calls and I get a chance to go to the Giants. And a year later, I'm back to be the head coach at uh, Temple University. Like two years from when I was cleaning my office out, I was having my, probably my best moment as, as, as a, as a coach. And, we told our kids, like, you know what, like, you know, we can't sit there and say, hey, trust in the Lord. You know, we can't sit here and say, uh, hey, what's next? C control the control. All these things I've told players for years. I I have to live by them now and trust that when we look back, man, we'll appreciate this time in Carolina. It'll make me a better coach. It'll make us a closer family. And then something great. Um, I don't know what it is, but something great will be around the corner and we'll be more prepared for it. And maybe that's just my kids. Maybe, maybe that was it for me and my kids will have something great around the corner. So I think that perspective um, you have to have. And, and uh, that's the only way that, again, to go, or going back to our point, that's the only way that you're able to uh, get to where you want um, is, is to be is to look back on this fondly. You know, I, I, I listened to Marv Levy's book this summer. And, you know, you listen to Marvel. This is a guy, this, this, this is a great coach, a coach that I've looked up to for a year. A guy took Buffalo to you know, multiple Super Bowls and, you know, get, gets fired in Kansas City after five years. And he details in the time all the things that went wrong there. And um, then he has to go and coach in, in, in the CFL and then come back and have the chance. And it's like, you know what? It was good enough for Marv Levy to go through that that time in Kansas City and come back better. It's probably okay for me, you know. Um, but I appreciate you asking about my family because uh, – uh, we've tried to turn this into a positive, positive life lesson of, you know what, guys, always look for the great people because there's great people everywhere. And we've met so many great people in Charlotte who've put our family first. That's awesome. Um, this, I think, is the perfect segue to the, the last part of this, which is let's let's look ahead here. Um, Coach, I, I can't type your name into a Google search without <laughs> seeing some reference to what school uh, has you on its radar, college uh, level and um, uh, and opportunities that are out there. So I'm not sure, but it looks like two or three schools are already hiring you. Um, you'll be happy to know. No, and in all seriousness, what what is uh, what is the future like? How are you approaching uh, the next chapter of your uh, professional life? You know, it, it's funny you say that. I, I got I got you know, I got fired at like 10:35. I did the team meeting at 11. I think that was the time frame. I'm home by 11:30, um, and at like 11:35, I got the first call from a search firm <laughs> about a college job. Um, so it's been a unique time. And that you know, normally when you get fired, you, know, you get a lot of texts like, "Hey, coach, I'm sorry." I've gotten a lot of texts like, "Hey, coach, I'm sorry." Hey, keep me in mind if you decide to da 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 da. Um, 
And so, you know, I, I don't know what's next. And, and really, honestly, uh, uh, I've tried to take the approach that like this is what's next. Like, you know, it's like one of my key sayings. If you ever talk to any player that's played for me, if you if you run into Deion Dawkins in Buffalo and say what's next, he'll kind of look at you like that's all I would ever say to guys like, like oh, you know, you fell down, you got hurt, you got, you know, you got beat up in, in the game, you had a bad game, you had a good game. Hey, what's next? Like no one cares what happened. Like what's next? And so it's been really key for me to say, hey, this time, like right now, like be, having a chance to talk to you, um, uh, having a chance to go back and say to myself, hey, what, what am I going to do differently the next time? What am I, and, and what am I going to do the same next time? Those things are important. And then, you know, a valuable lesson about, you know, hey, I want to make sure that I take the right job. I want to make sure that I go to a place that it really wants to do it the way that I want to do it. You know, when you when you hire me, you're getting a distinct, you know, way of doing things. You know, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna try to build a team that is that 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 it might take a little while to get there, but it's gonna be sustained. It's gonna be built on the right things. Yeah, you know, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of the fact that like through that adversity and all of the scrutiny, you know, those first couple games that like, you know, when you listen to those players talk in the locker, when you listen to those players after the games, you listen to McCaffrey, you listen to Shaq, they were they stood up for what we were doing and they stood up for me as just as a man. And so, um, so it has to be a place. Um, it has to be a team that, that believes in that and that wants that. And then I have to do it better than I did it just last time. You know, I don't, I don't shirk the responsibility of, you know, I have to do it better than I did it in Carolina, but I'm going to do the same thing. Um, just, just do it better. So that could be tomorrow. That, that, that could be, you know, that could be a, a school could call me tomorrow. That could be in three years from now. That could be, uh, that could be, uh, you know, so I don't, I don't know what it will be. I just know this. I'll, I'll be involved with football. Um, I'll either be talking about football, teaching football, coaching football. It could be in the NFL. It could be in college. It could be in the Canadian football league. It could be in high school. Uh, some of the best coaches I've been around in my life are high school coaches. Uh, I was in the state of Texas. Um, I was in New Jersey. I was in Pennsylvania. I was in Maryland. I, there, there's, there's more people doing great things for the game of football and for young people at the high school level, coaching them, training them on the side, helping them get scholarships. So I will be involved in football somehow. Um, it'll, it'll, all I know is it will be the right fit. Uh, it'll be a place that, that, that gets me and that I get and, and we fit well together. So I'm not giving you a great answer because I don't know what that is yet because I haven't found it. But um, I do know the most important thing I can do right now is, 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 is wait and find the right place and the right job and the right people to do this uh, the way that I want to do it. I, I hope you know, I have, I have like elite respect for you. And oh, I, no, well, I do, I, I'm a, I'm a reader and a football guy. And so I just, I just, I just was excited to, 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 to talk to you. That means, and, that means more to me than you'll ever know, Matt. That's thank great. You. I appreciate that. And so I was sitting there, I, was, I kept saying to myself, like, if I could encapsulate it, like, you know, like how I feel right now, um, you know, cause I'm grateful for this time with my family. I'm grateful, but you know, like I, I watched college football last night till 11 o'clock and I'm watching the NFL all day today. Like I love this game. And, you know, um, cause I still have a bunch of players that'll reach out to me and text me. I actually had one, a guy call me yesterday that, that was on the Panthers, just checking in on my wife and my kids. I mean, just, just an elite, um, time with those players. And, and, and I just kept thinking about my whistle. You know, if you ever went on my desk at, at any places, I probably have like six whistles, you know, I'd walk on the practice field every day and, Whichever equipment manager, you know, Donnie, Donnie Toner at Carolina would hand me a whistle. And usually I was supposed to hand it back to them, but I had a way of usually walking off the field with it and then I'd have six whistles. And it's <laughs> it, it's uh, when I think about my kids, I think about like my, my youngest daughter, Leona, you know, who doesn't really know what's going on. Like she would always take my whistle and walk around the house. And, you know, the games are great. I love the games. I love winning. I love competing. I love all that. And so that's the ultimate reason why you do it. But yeah, I, yeah it's it's been it's been it's been six weeks, you know, since I blew a whistle. It's been six weeks since I had that whistle. And you only have that whistle at practice. You know, obviously you don't have a whistle during the games. And so as I sit here now, I just I, I miss that whistle. I, I miss being at practice. I miss being with the guys. I miss I miss seeing something done wrong and like, hey, let, hey, hold on, let's stop it. Let's do it again. I miss teaching. You know, I, John Wooden had an impact on me at a, you know, at an early age, you know, just read him. And then I was at UCLA and had a chance to meet him. And, you know, he, he always referred to coaching as teaching. And I miss teaching the game. I miss, I miss be, being around the guys. I miss being in the locker room. I, I have this great picture after it's in my office. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's me and Cam Irving hugging after we beat the saints this year. I mean, I, I miss that. I miss those relationships. And so I don't know how long I'll be able to be away from football because, you know, I miss that, you know, to be honest with you, being a head coach, you have less of that. Like I loved, I loved being the defensive line coach. 
having my guy. I love coaching the tight ends and having my guys. And so, um, you know, I love my family. They're my team right now, and they'll always be my team. But I also miss having that whistle. I also miss being on the practice field. I miss coaching. And so, you know, I, I hope and pray that, that the time comes where I have a chance to do that again. As I said, in whatever form, whatever fashion, whatever level, I've had a chance to do it. Um, you know, when I sit there and look at my time, I don't say that, hey, you know, I was a college coach that couldn't win in the NFL. I just I couldn't win in Carolina. Uh, um, um, you know, that that's how I encapsulate that. Like, you know, uh, the things I believe in were taught to me by Tom Coughlin. They were taught to me by Joe Paterno. They're the things that last. And, um, um, you know, I, 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 but most importantly, more than anything else, I, I, I miss practice. And so uh, I know this when, co when coaches call me and they're maybe going through a rough time. And I have a lot of people reaching out to me right now, you know, who kind of going through, you know, hey, I, I tell them, like, don't worry about the pressure. I would give anything right now to be on a sideline today. Uh, I would give anything to be out there on a practice field today. So, so lean into it, man. Enjoy it. Enjoy coaching today. Cause like me, you never know when it could be taken away. So I look back at Carolina fondly and very gratefully because I had a chance to coach. Um, I look ahead excitedly, but in this moment right now, man, I miss Vic. I miss taking that whistle and going out to practice and coaching the guys. And so that's, if anything, if anything, it reinvigorates my love of the game and my love of coaching and uh, I can't wait to see what I do next. I love the way you put that. I'm so glad you incorporated that into our conversation. That is powerful. That is Thanks. so powerful.